Hey guys, it's Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art. Thank you for joining me again today on our Friday Facebook Live. Today we're doing a fun fold. It's called a double Z fold. And I get to play with a brand new products today that I was able to get about a month early being a demonstrator. And these products will be available starting May 3. So that is coming up. I have brand new catalogs ordered and I, they're all ready to ship out next week. So I have a link in the description here if you'd like to reserve your copy. I'd be happy to send you one. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and show you what we're going to be making today. This is so pretty. This is that suite that I showed when I did my unboxing. It is called Happiness Abounds, the stamp set is. And I think the whole suite is called Hues of Happiness. It has this beautiful paper. But look at this fun fold. So this is how it goes, like this. Isn't that fun? So I will teach you the measurements of how to put this beautiful card together. So let's go on down to the desktop here. There we go. All right, so again, we're using this Happiness Abounds. This is a brand new stamp set available May 3rd, 2022. And it's got some gorgeous sentiments as well as really great um, outline images for coloring. And my favorite coloring tools are the Stampin' Blends. So we will be using those today. Along with this suite are matching dies. So we've got some, I'll be using these two today to cut out um, these two flowers. But we've got matching dies for all of the rest of these images as well as some fun uh, border pieces and a kind of lacy bit. So maybe at the end we'll see what this looks like because I'm dying to see that in person. The suite also includes this beautiful paper pack, um, Happiness Abounds, and I did show this in my unboxing video, but it's beautiful, very bright, colorful um, patterns and everything. And it also has these fun uh, dots here. See if I can find the name of those. Oh, it's not right here. That's okay. Oh, wait, it's this. They are called the Glossy Dots Assortment. So I think this is Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, Daffodil Delight, maybe Mango, and um, Soft Sky, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's got to be Pool Party, sorry. So we are going to be using those today, and this piece of paper, this came with um, this blues and purples and into yellows and then it slowly turns into these pinks and purples uh, or pinks and yellows and oranges. So I'm, I cut off the top of this at five and a quarter to use on the other card. And now I'm going to use this strip, which is actually kind of right in the middle of the paper. So I'm getting both of the color blends here, the purple, little bit of purples up here and um, a little bit of the pinks and yellows in the middle here. So I'm going to do a strip of that. So I will take out my trimmer, put aside my other pieces here. We will just cut a strip that is five and a quarter tall. And that will leave me with this gorgeous strip to use on another project. It's got fun rainbow strips on the other side with little X's, cute. Um, we'll be actually using both sides of this paper. So I'm going to cut a piece at four inches along this strip. So this will be um, actually the inside of the, the sheet and then this piece, let's see, make my, sure my measurements, I should have measured all this stuff and written it down. Um, this is just under two inches. So it's one eighth shy of two inches uh, for both of these. So it's one and seven eighths. Is that right? I think so. Let's just make sure. Yes, one and seven eighths. <laughs> so the, the colorful side for the front is that and then you're still left with a big piece big enough to go on the front of another card so save that for another time and we will put those to the side there we also want to 
keep out our trimmer to do the card base. And I've actually already done the cutting and the scoring, but I wanted to show you. We have a black card base. This is just your regular eight and a half by five and a half, scored in half at four and a quarter. And then we will also have a piece here that is seven inches wide by three and a half inches tall. I've scored that in half at three and a half inches. So that's right in half. But then you also want to put it over in your trimmer to five and five eighths so that you have a panel, a strip here that is one and three eighths inch wide on this side. So this is going to be the middle piece that kind of pops out like this. So let's put the trimmer away. Actually, not quite yet. We'll just go ahead and cut our white panels while we have everything out. So we're going to need a strip here. This is three and a half inches wide. We want a strip here of the white at three and one quarter. I should put my measurements in there. Three and one quarter for the strip here. And this will give you everything you need for your white inside pieces. And this will be three and one quarter for your first cut. So this is a square. Three and one quarter by three and one quarter. That will fit right on the front there like that. And then your next piece, again, our panel here is, let's see, it's two and one eighth. So we again want to go one eighth shy of the two inches. We're going to go one and seven eighths for this one. So that should fit right there like that. Perfect. And then this one, I said it was one and three eighths. Um, the panel, so we need to go a, ha a quarter inch less than that. So it's just one and one eighth. Hopefully I'm doing all my math right. And then we're left with this piece and we'll be stamping some pieces on there also. So here's all of our little white panels looking good. And I think now we can put the trimmer away. Okay, so on our piece here, Oh, actually, I didn't score the front here. This card base here, the black one, you are going to want to score this side in half. So that is at um, let's see. So if it's four and a quarter, half of that is two and an eighth. So you can put the score line on two and an eighth. To score that. So that piece will actually fold backwards on the front side. I should have brought my bone folder over here, but I didn't. That's okay. I'll just give it a good burnish maybe with my scissors or something. If you're ever in a pinch, just kind of use the back of your scissors here. Give it a press or a fingernail. There we go. So this front piece will just get folded right in half like that. And then this piece is going to be put on like that. Okay. But we don't want to glue any of this down yet because we want to do some stamping on those white panels. We'll put those off to the side for now. And we can actually decorate the front of this with these panels. So this one goes on the inside. And these will go on these two panels here. Let's just go ahead and do that right away. I hope everybody has a fun weekend planned. I've had a very busy week. Last week we had four days of wedding things with family, which is so fun, but busy. This week we have two days of a different wedding, plus two more birthdays. <laughs> on top of all the extracurricular school activities and uh, crazy family things that are going on. So I, um, I'm ready to have a regular weekend, but I'm also looking forward to all of the food that I get to eat. So I guess a silver lining. Life is busy because we have good family and good friends, right? That's good. But I also like to just relax on weekends too, or get something done around the house. So there we go on our panels. We've got the flower panels here, and then the back side has this fun, stripy X rainbow pattern. 
So the front will kind of look like this. Now we can actually glue this piece right on here. This will go with this edge that's folded right up against the very side on the right here. So we can actually put that on. I'm going to put glue on the back side of this flap. Make sure that you put it um, on your card before you glue it down to make sure that you are gluing down the right side. The whole big panel is on the front. You've got a fold and then it folds backwards again. So when you fold it all together and turn it over, this small area is where you're gonna want the glue. You can do liquid glue, you can do tear and tape, you can do seal plus, something that holds strong because we are going to be moving this piece and you want it to have a good hold. So I'm gonna gently set that down about where I need it and then I have time to wiggle. That's the nice part about this liquid glue. But I do wanna make sure that it's up against this edge. And that looks about even. And I'll just hold that. Sorry about wiggling here. <laughs> I love this sweet. This is my first play with this really and it's just so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this like this and kind of put my fingers here where it looks like this um, is going up to just so I can kind of make a little rectangle here where the glue is going to go just inside those lines, I guess. I just kind of give it some good foundation here. And that's just gonna go flat on there. You want that to be flush and be able to fold flat so that it fits in your envelope really nicely. If you're just joining us, we're making a double Z fold card with the hues of happiness, new stuff. It's so pretty, so beautiful. I love flowers and rainbows and bright colors next to black and white. I think they just pop really nice. So here's our double Z mechanism. So you can use this with anything that you have at home also, but um, this specific products will be available May 5th. So if you haven't claimed your catalog from me or if you don't have one yet or you aren't working with the demonstrator already, you can click the link in the description there and claim your catalog. I would love to send you one. All right, so let's put this aside for the moment and we're gonna do some stamping. So here's our three panels, right? I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper, I think. That's what I did not grab, I apologize. Okay, here's a little piece of grid paper, that'll work. So on this middle piece, we're gonna do the greeting and I chose wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. So we're just gonna be stamping in Memento today. Actually, that's the only ink color that we're gonna be using for the stamping process because we're gonna use Stampin' Blends to really color everything in and make everything so beautiful. So I will just line this up. It's a bit snug to fit in there, but it does fit. Cute. Now that one's ready to glue in when that's when we're ready to do that. But here we're gonna do all of the flowers. So I'll just leave my ink open here and get out my, let's see, okay. Here's my extra sheet that we cut off of the end of all of these. And this is the one that's going on the front. So I actually want to lay my stamps on here. But first, before we do anything, we're gonna put the greeting on so we don't cover it up with any of the flowers. Greetings first, unless you're putting it on a little label that pops up. We just want this to make sure we don't cover that up. Okay, once that's on there, we're gonna lay these flowers on and actually pick them all up with one go, which is kinda cool. So I'm gonna put this leaf here and this flower here. And this leaf kind of sticking off this way. And with my big block, let's see, this is a E block. I'm just going to pick all of those up at the same time and ink them all up at the same time and stamp them all in one go. Mm 
here we go. Beautiful. And we will, on our scrap piece here, do one more with the little flower. This is my scrap piece. And then on this little tiny strip, we're going to stamp the flowers and some more leaves. So maybe coming off of the right here, coming off of the left. And let's fill it in with some little leaves. I think this will be cute. I actually want to use these littler leaves. There's five little leaves on this one. Since this piece is so small, we'll fill it in with all of these tiny ones. All right, we will color that in a bit. Cute little background piece that we made there. And then this piece is all ready to be colored also. We're gonna color this one. And we need one more, here's my big piece, in the bigger flower. So since this is a larger stamp, I'm gonna turn it upside down to ink it up, just so I can see and make sure that it's inked up all the way. And we'll just stamp that over here and give it a snip out so that we can see that. I'm going to cut this out actually because I have a plan. We're gonna use that uh, lacy die on this piece later. Don't let me forget. All right, so before we cut these out and everything, let's go ahead and color them. Because if we make a mistake in coloring, then we'd have to start all over. I don't think we're gonna make any mistakes. Okay, so here's our colors on this one. I wanna draw from the colors that are in this paper here. Oops, sorry, it's not on camera. The paper that's here. So we've got purples and we've got blue and we've got pink and yellow. So I think what I'll do is, let's see, Flirty Flamingo. Let's do Mango Melody. And we're gonna need the greens. So we have Granny Apple Green, and I want the light Mossy Meadow, which is one of the colors in here. And I want one more color. I think it's going to be the blue, actually. We did purple on the other one, so we'll just add a little bit of the blue. Okay, so this is the pool party, I think. All right, so those are going to be in my colors. I'm actually also going to use a little bit of, where is it, the bronze marker for the center of the large flower, because you do see a little bit of some brown in there. So. All right, so let's go ahead and use that one real quick. That's just gonna be in the center of this large one. Nice and easy. And I am going to add a little bit of the mango to the middle of this big flower. But just that one. And what color do we wanna accent this one? I think, actually, we didn't do should we do mango? Let's do a blend of both of those. This is flirty flamingo and mango. This might turn out terrible, but I don't know. <laughs> That's why we experiment, right? So let's start out with the lightest flirty flamingo. All of these colors are in the paper. I let the, the DSP dictate what colors I kind of pull out and I'm allowed to play with, just so I know that it's going to match. Even if my coloring might not be the best, it's going to match. So first of all, I color the whole thing in whatever the lightest color is so that we have a base. This is gonna be the longer portion of the video. So if you're watching the replay, you can probably fast forward through some of this. If you're watching live, um, yep, you're just gonna to have to hang with me and chat for a bit. All right, so tell me, 
when um here's a, a question when somebody says to dress casually to a function how do you interpret casual dress i'm just curious because i feel like it varies widely depending on the function depending on the people who are going um it's gonna be so different so if you were invited somewhere and somebody said dress casually what would you think that that was I'm just curious. <laughs> Go ahead and make a comment in the chat box. Or if you're watching on YouTube later, you can just leave a comment below. See, off the top of my head, I would say casual is what I'm wearing right now. What I usually wear, just comfy clothes, but nothing like, nothing junky, nothing like not like sweatpants but just like you know, comfortable but sometimes casual can mean you know what i would wear to church <laughs> like on a at a fancy church because usually i wear my casual <laughs> to church but um yeah some people might say that casual is like a like a cute cotton dress or something to me that's not quite casual that's that's fancy i'm just curious what you guys think so i was told to wear um casual tonight and because i was asking my husband what the dress code was and he said casual and i said but what casual who's casual <laughs> what do you mean so you always have to ask clarifying questions because even when you ask the dress code, you're like, well, but really, what, what kind of casual? So I'm going to err on the side of a little bit dressier than I would normally wear, but still comfortable. I think that's appropriate. It's a dress rehearsal, dress rehearsal, that's for dance class. It is a, um, you know, the wedding rehearsal, the rehearsal dinner. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here's my beautiful flower. I did color that with flirty flamingo and a little bit of the light mango melody. I think that turned out nice. Let's see how it looks next to this paper. Ooh, I think that looks good. Yeah, Becky says casual sounds like you can wear whatever you want to, but you'd probably do a nice jeans and a nice top, not a t-shirt. Yeah, I think it depends on who you're hanging out with too, if, it, if jeans are even appropriate or not. Like I would think so, but it depends. <laughs> like, mm. All right, so let's go ahead and do mango on this one. Got the light one here. Unless they say no jeans, I would say jeans and a nice top are probably okay. Last weekend, we had a dress code, casual, no jeans. But it was specified, which was helpful because I probably would have wore jeans. I'm glad that they were clear with that. That is needed. So fill it in all with the Mango Melody Light. I'm going to go along the edges. Oh, this one, I think I need a new marker. I must not have closed the lid nice. The small side's still juicy. All right, so I'm going to color kind of in the center of the flower where I think maybe some shadows would be because the petals should be rounding into the middle there. And then I will blend that out with the light one again along those edges. Again, I used Memento black ink for the outlines so that my lines don't smear. Now I'm going to get out my greens here. This is Granny Apple Green. I'm going to use the dark Granny Apple for the stem here. And I will color in the leaves with the light. And then go back in with the dark. And then we're gonna do a little bit of touch up. See, I like using different colors to kind of add a little bit of depth of color within the same 
element. I feel like it, especially if it's already in the DSP, you know which colors to use. It kind of adds a little bit of extra depth. All right, so that was the light one. Here's the dark one. I'm going to, looking at this paper, let's see, let me show you. Looking at this paper, it has little pieces that have dark on them. Maybe about half of the leaf is kind of a dark um, bit. So I'm kind of trying to copy what is already there. So I'm just going to draw a line here and maybe color like, like this. And then maybe draw a line like this. I'm not going all the way to the end, but just kind of just playing around. We'll just do about half of the leaf in a little bit of a shadow. And this will blend out. We're going to go back in with the light one through that whole half of the leaf just to kind of Give it a good blending. I'm going to use the small tip. This leaves are small. With blends, again, you don't want to go too close to the edge or it starts to bleed outside of your image lines. All right, now I'm going to go in with the dark, no, I'm sorry, the light mossy meadow with the thin tip and just touch a little bit near the, the tips or the bases of the leaves. Just see how that gives it just a little bit of a shadowy depth of color. Look how cool that looks. I'm gonna bring this up closer to the camera in just a second. So, doesn't that look nice? All right, so this piece is ready. And we just have to finish these two here. So let's do the same thing with the leaves here. And it's just little pieces. Is this light or dark? Oh, this is the dark one. I didn't color it all in. All right, so we're going to go in with the light. And I'm using this grid paper behind here because it does bleed through the paper. So if you wanted to use blends on the front of your card, and you didn't have anything behind it, um, it would bleed through. You may not be able to see on that one, but it does bleed through. So I always have a backing paper and I'm always coloring on a piece that I'm gluing on top of something else. Um, you wouldn't want to probably do this on your envelope um, unless you inserted a, another piece of paper in the inside while you were coloring so that it didn't bleed over to the back side of your envelope because that can look a little messy. All right, so here we got the stem and that one I can't see. We'll do this stem. We'll make our little shadows again. Doesn't really matter which side of the leaf I'm doing, just kind of playing around here. All right. And I think this flower is going to be the blue. And then I got to decide which of those are going to be what color. So the base color here goes pretty fast because you don't see any coloring lines with these nice alcohol markers. You can see I just quickly colored that in. If I was coloring with, you know, Crayola markers or something, you'd see all the different strokes that you made with these alcohol markers. You look like a pro. I love these. All right, taking the dark one again, going towards the center of where the petals are kind of coming out of the center. Just kind of coloring just against where those petals would meet the stem. And going back again with the light and kind of blending through that line. All right, that one's done using Pool Party. And so if this is on here like this, and we're gonna add a blue one, and we've got this pink here, this will be at the back. What color do we wanna do there? So I think I'm gonna do blue and pink. Because the blue's at the bottom here, now I'm going to put it at the top. 
So I'll take the light here. That's kind of how I determine where to put things. I kind of play around. I lay it out. I look at it and try not to make it look too robotic. There's the blue. My table squeaking. All right, and the pink wasn't it? Okay. I got a lot of markers over here. I brought them over just in case. All right, so here's the light flirty flamingo. I keep losing my screen here. All right, and here is the dark. Right underneath there would be a shadow. And we'll go ahead and add this light mango melody in the middle just while we still. And then we're gonna add the light flirty flamingo just to kind of blend everything together. like magic all right so there's that piece beautiful all right we just have to cut these two pieces out with the stamp and cut and emboss machine and we can glue all of these pieces on right now let's put this to the side here Oops. I'm gonna scoop some of these markers off a little bit further so I have some arm room here Okay, so let's take the glue here. We can glue on our front piece here. Wouldn't you like to get this happy birthday card? <laughs> All right. Look how pretty this is. I hope you try this um, this fold, and I would love to see your creations, whatever you made it with. You can send it to me. I'll feature it on my Facebook page. And of course, give you credit. There we go. We're almost done with our double Z fold. We'll just cut these pieces out. I've got my mini cut and emboss machine here. And I'll get my plates out here. Got plate number one telling me everything, all my sandwich to do for a die. We've got plate number two. And then another plate number two for on top. So I have this flower. And now I gotta figure out where my dies went. There they are. Um, and where did I put the two dies that I was going to use? Oh, here they are. Okay, so I added some washi tape here so that they would go through and not wiggle when I did the first one. So they're still attached to this first piece. <laughs> All right, so I think that goes like this. There should It should line up just perfectly on the die with the outline. And since we have the other one is a separate die and a separate image, we can actually run those through at the same time. I just like to get it real straight. And scissors are 
here. I'm just going to trim off this extra little piece. We don't need that right now. And we'll put these through. All right, that's all we needed from that machine. We'll just pop out our pieces here and I'll put those dies away later. Hooray. Okay, so now we're going to put this flower right there so we can pop this one up on dimensionals. Beautiful, right? So this one will go flat. All right, who loves this whole suite of products? I just love it. It's so pretty. All right, I need to find my dimensionals. It's under all the markers. <laughs> A new sheet of dimensionals. All right, so I'm going to put four dimensionals on the back here just to give it really good support. And let's put that right, and you can put it off to the, the side here. It can overlap here because this is all going to stay flat. So I'm going to just make sure I can read my words. Just tuck it right in there. So there's our cute card, and we still want to add some of these beautiful dots. Where did they go? I keep making piles of things and... <laughs> they're there. I want to use these pink ones. I like that they grouped these in big, medium, small in the these four colors. So you can use three dots in the same color on 60 cards. That's how many dots are here. There's 160 times three, 180. <laughs> anyway, there's 60 groupings of three. So I'm going to put one here. And then one up top here. I think these always look good in groups of three. So there is our card made with this Hues of Happiness or Happiness Abounds stamp set. Let me know what you think. I know Becky says this paper is so beautiful. It really is. And this was the one that I was like, eh, I don't really like this one as much as the other one. I mean, it's, they're all beautiful, but this one was like, well, I'm going to play with this one first. Do you ever do that? You go, well, I'm not sure about this one, so I'll use this one first just, in, just to play around and see how I like it. This is beautiful. I love it. So here's my strip that's left over. Okay, so we're not done because I wanted to have a play with these other dies, right? So here is a piece. And I'm going to cut this in half because I actually want to do see a couple different things that the dies can do. Let's see, this is, mm, that'll be about in half. Actually, we want to see where the dies are. All right, we need to know how big those are. Come here, dice. Okay, so here's our lacy piece. How big is that? We just want to cut a whole piece that'll fit that, right? So that's about four and a quarter. All right. So well, let's see what that looks like. But I also want to see this piece right here. Both of these, but specifically the one with the little round dots. It's going to look like you ripped a little piece of paper out of a notebook. What? That's going to be so cute. So we're going to have to see that. So I'm going to cut a piece about hmm, three inches. I don't know. We're just cutting a piece. Is it long enough? That's not quite long. It's too long. All right. So I'm going to do it at four inches. Four inches by three inches. And we will do... How does this work? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to give the, the school a call back here in a second, but I am just going to finish this video because I would really like to see these dies here.
if I can get the, <laughs> I just want this washi tape. I don't even know if it's sticky anymore. All right, so we're gonna do this piece. And this one probably doesn't need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these through real quick. I have to know, I have to know what they look like. And my plates. All right, test number one. I haven't played with this yet, so I've had such a busy week and weekend. And... Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Let's reveal them at the same time. I'm just going to scoop this off. Ooh, maybe. Oh, my. Look at that. All right, I'm going to scrape my piece here to get all those pieces off. Sorry. Good enough. Let's run this one through. Hopefully straight-ish. All right. Okay, the big reveal. We've got two fun pieces to see. All right. Oh, look at that. That's cool. So some of them are punched down and some of them are not. I bet you could just go through and, and poke them all out if you wanted to. I can see some falling out, but I kind of like the look where you don't have to make a fuss about it. You can make it like this or, you know, poke them all out if you want to. I really like that. That's cool. You could see, you know, paper behind there poking through. It's just kind of a cool, subtle background. That's cool. All right, so that's this little lacy die here. And this piece, oh, look at it. <laughs> that's so cool. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's neat. That's really neat. So you could have this, you know, at the top of your page and just have your thing on there. And it looks like you just ripped it out of a notebook. It's all like a little chewed up and everything. You can kind of bend these and kind of distress it a little bit. Like you just, ah, oh, that, that's really cool. Okay. So that's a, that's just one of those edge pieces. There's another one that's kind of got the little rectangle pieces. Like you ripped it out of a, um, another kind of binder, the, the ones where you do the binding machine. I guess these are, this could be a binding machine too. But this is so cute. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? So you can make your own little notebook paper. Okay, so here was our project from today. The double Z fold. And the first one, where's the other one that I made? I want to know which one you like better. So this one was the one I made first. It's kind of a blue, more blues and purples. And then this one's got a little bit more pinks and yellows, but they're both really pretty. Which one do you like better? And thank you so much for watching. Again, if you'd like to join my email list, I think the link is in the description also, and um, you can claim your catalog. Oh, I have one more thing before I go. I wanted to show you next week's class. I had to postpone it one week for a family emergency, but I do want to give you a sneak peek of the cards that we're making, you can do this online or in person. So we are playing with the flowering rain boots stamp set. Here is card number one, super cute. You also get some of these little brass butterflies. So there's card number one. Um, card number two is this cute little one. We're gonna decorate the flap on that one. I like how this looks like it's a little ribbon but it's not, it's just a piece of paper back there. Cool, there's card number two. Here is card number three. Super cute and purple. And then here is card number four, oops. This is a fun fold, so it's kind of funny here. So that's how it looks, but it does actually open 
and you can display it like this on your desktop. So kind of a neat little fun fold there. So those I will also link to the class, but you can look in my events section to see this class coming up. You can get this class from me for um, $35 shipped, or you can place an order $30 or more in my online store and earn it for free. If you are in person, you can get it for $20 or a $25 or more purchase in my online store. We'll get you this class materials, the packet for free. So I have a limited number of packets. If you'd like to claim one, please mark going in the Facebook event for this class. This is the April stamp class, flowering rain boots. All right, thank you so much for watching guys. Have a fabulous weekend. I'll see you later. Bye.